Hey everyone, if you are looking for some fun and easy ways to get your K through two students working on their speaking and listening skills, then this is the video for you. Today I'm gonna go ahead and share three fun and engaging ways for students to practice not only public speaking in front of the class or with partners, but also practicing their listening skills. According to the state standards, we want our K through two students to participate in collaborative conversations where they're not only speaking about something they know and love, but they're also really doing a good job listening and asking questions to have a great conversation. So these three ideas are going to be surefire ways to get your students doing just that. If you are new here, my name is Susan Jones. I am a former first grade and K through two literacy teacher, and I upload videos just like this one every Thursday and Sunday here on YouTube. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel and follow along. Let me go ahead and grab my notes. And while I do that, be sure to like this video and let's get started. All right, when practicing our speaking and listening skills in the classroom, the first thing you'll wanna do is go ahead and talk about the kind of rules and procedures when we're listening to our classmates. I like to use an anchor chart like this one in my K through two classroom. And this is the actual anchor chart I used in first grade. It was called accountable talk. And these are some of the things we would practice saying to one another. First, we always mention that we listen with our eyes. So we are looking at the speaker, our ears. So we have our ears open, ready to hear hear what they have to say, and we also listen with our heart. And when we talk about listening with our heart, I like to tell my students that, you know, if you were the one speaking, it's kind of like the golden rule, treat others the way you would want to be treated. So if you were speaking and you were trying to share something with someone and you kind of noticed that maybe they were ignoring you or they were talking to someone else or not paying attention, that might hurt your feelings a little bit. That might hurt your heart a little bit. So you want to listen to them the way you would want to be listened to. So the first one is I agree with blank because blank. And I like this because they are using their classmates names and they're also giving a reason why they might agree with someone. Same with I disagree. We talk a lot about how it's okay to disagree with someone and you can do that respectfully by using a sentence stem like this one. And then also I know in first grade they have you wanting to build upon conversations. So I like this sentence starter for that one where it says, I like what you said about blank. I think dot, dot, dot. So they're acknowledging what someone else said. They're using their listening skills to do just that. And then they're building upon it. They might then disagree, but they're still building upon that conversation. And then for the last one, that also helps students build upon what other kids are saying, where they say, I heard you say blank, and I'd like to add more. And then they can share their ideas. A lot of times when somebody says something, students will just kind of butt in or jump on top of it and share their own opinion. And they're not really acknowledging that they listened to what their classmate might have said. So here they're kind of repeating back, oh, I heard you say this, and I want to talk more about that. So those are our guidelines for having respectful discussions in the classroom. That is something that we talk about a lot. We set it up from the beginning of the year and those sentence stems and anchor charts that stays on our board front and center for most of the year. So once those rules are in place, how can we go ahead and get students practicing those speaking and listening skills? Tip number one is to go ahead and incorporate it into your morning meeting or your morning routine. I used to have a morning meeting in our classroom and we would sit in a circle. We would really get a good chance to listen to one another, answer questions, do a little morning message. A lot of these speaking and listening skills were being able to be practiced during that morning meeting. But even if you don't have a morning meeting set up in your classroom, there are still some great ways you can incorporate some speaking and listening with your students. Now, I find that students are most engaged when they are able to talk about topics that they chose, topics that excite them. One of my favorite ways to do this with my classroom was every Monday morning, we would have what we called the weekend news. Over the weekend, you know, lots of stuff happens with my students and they just want to share it, whether they went to the grocery store and got their favorite snack, maybe they got a new pair of shoes, maybe they had a party. Uh, sometimes I just want to tell you that they sat on the couch and watched TV or played their favorite video game. Whatever it is, oftentimes your students want to kind of get this stuff out and share with you, the teacher or their classmates, something fun that they did. So it's a good idea to capitalize on this and let students actually go ahead and express it. It also lets all of the, you know, all the things that they want to share, lets them all get it out and then they can get to work. 
So when we would do the weekend news, I would do this one of two ways. Usually at the beginning of the year, many of my students hadn't really, you know, broken out of their shell just yet. So not all of them wanted to stand up or, you know, share in front of the whole class something exciting that they did. So often at the beginning of the year, I'll just ask for some volunteers. You might see a pattern where you see the same students kind of wanting to share every time. And some of your other students might need a little nudge. But first I would start towards the beginning and just letting whoever wants to share while everyone else practices listening. It can also be a lot easier for your somewhat shyer students to maybe use some of those accountable talk sentence stems instead of having to share an entire story on their own. They might just want to tell somebody that they agree with them or that they liked what they were saying or maybe they made a connection with something that one of their classmates said. Once that kind of gets rolling, you can also do the weekend news by having your students split up either in small groups, about three or four students per group, or even with partners. So that way they can go ahead and they each take a turn getting to share what they did over the weekend or just something that they want to share that they haven't gotten to share yet. This will allow all of your students a chance to get to speak. And again, for some of your shyer students, they might not be as nervous to speak in front of one or two classmates instead of speaking in front of the entire class. Well, you know, it's really quiet. Now, like I said, we would call this the weekend news because we generally did this every single Monday. So students came in excited for things to share with the class, but you can also do this a bunch of other ways. If you wanted to incorporate this a little bit each day, you could instead have students kind of break it up over the week. So instead of having all your students share on Monday, you might assign students a day where they get to kind of have free reign and chat or share for a minute or that's kind of a long time, but how However long they need to to share and get off their chest what they want to with the class. So maybe on Monday you have three students, on Tuesday you have four students, etc. You just break it up. And if they didn't have something that they wanted to share off the top of their head, you can also use some discussion cards. If you do a quick Google search for some morning meeting discussion cards, you will find a bunch of free ideas just to get students thinking about something to share. Again, some of your students are going to come in and just not want to stop talking and have lots to share and other students might look at you and be like i'm supposed to share something i don't have anything to share what am i supposed to say and kind of freeze so by giving them these pre-prompted discussion cards it gives them something to actually express with the class some of these pre-planned questions are some of my favorite which brings me into tip number two is this guy being too loud he's being too loud hi it's time for nappy say night night Nay, nay. <laughs> okay, activity number two for getting students to practice their speaking and listening skills are would you rather cards. I absolutely love using these. We do use them sometimes at morning meeting, but they're also a quick and easy thing to kind of display up on a smart board, or you can just ask your students out loud the would you rather question, get them thinking about their answer, sharing it and kind of debating it with a classmate. A couple years ago, I made 110 different kid-friendly and fun would you rather questions, and they look like this. Here's an example of one that says, would you rather be able to fly or be invisible? And as you can see, they have picture prompts that make them again more kid friendly in case your kindergarten students need any sort of reference to think about their answer. Now when introducing these I have my students like I said think about it first, have their answer in their head, and not only do they have to pick an answer but they need to be able to produce a reason for that answer. They need to think of a reason why they would rather be invisible. And so they'll have that ready in their head, then they can turn and chat with a partner and see what the other person says. Now again, they can really use those accountable talk sentence stems. Oh, I agree with you wanting to be invisible. I want to be invisible too. This is why I would. Or I disagree with you. I would way rather fly. Here's my reasons why. I really love using these because you can use them as time fillers, you can use them at the end of the day, you can throw one up when you're waiting in line, however you want to use them, but it is such a fun way for students to share their opinions, which they love doing and giving all their funny reasons why. And again, these are kid friendly, so they get students giggling and laughing, and sometimes I like to throw in like the silliest reasons about why I might want to do something, and they really enjoy it. 
I'm gonna go ahead and link all of those would you rather slides down in the description of this video. And actually, if you go ahead and click that link and download the preview at the product, you will be able to try 10 slides completely for free. I made them all as big digital slides and I also made them so you can cut them out and put it in a journal if you wanted these to be writing prompts as well. This video is all about the speaking and listening portion, but some of the examples include, would you rather be a wizard or a superhero? Would you rather play basketball or soccer? Would you rather only eat broccoli for the rest of your life or carrots for the rest of your life? Those are just some of the free ones so you can get an idea of what those slides that I made are like. All right, idea number three is another fun one that you can do with students and it is called guess that blank. Might be guess that animal, guess that book, guess that food, whatever you wanna decide. I would probably start with guess my animal, that's an easy one, and for this game, you can do this whole group or small group. I like to start with it whole group so they can see how it's supposed to be done with me kind of modeling it and asking questions. So for this game, students will think of an animal in their head. Let's pretend I'm thinking of a zebra. And you have to start by giving one hint to your class. So I might say, okay, I have my animal and my hint is that this animal is sometimes seen at a zoo. Now, once I give a hint, I go ahead and I have to get three yes or no questions from the class. So different students can ask a yes or no question. You might need to review what a yes or no question really sounds like and how we don't repeat questions, but they will try to go ahead. You'll collect three from the class and they'll try to guess my animal. After three yes or no questions, if students haven't guessed it correctly, I will go ahead and try to think of another hint to share with my class. Maybe an easier one like, this animal has stripes. Now that could be a tiger, it still could be a zebra. People might not guess it right away. And you will want to, again, practice this with your kids so they can think of some good hints that don't give it totally away, but just give them a little bit of an idea to get them guessing about what your animal might be. I love this one for both speaking and listening because on the speaking side of things, students need to express what kind of animal and try to think of some hints to share with their class. And on the listening side, students have to really pay attention to those clues and the answers to the yes or no questions to decide what they want their question or their guess to be about the animal. Just like the would you rather questions, you could do this during morning meeting or you could do it at any sort of time filler opportunity. Now, before I wrap up this video, I do wanna make it clear that these three games and activities are just kind of precursors to get your students feeling comfortable speaking in front of the class before they, let's say, share a paper or a story that they wrote. That might be a little bit more vulnerable of a position to be in for your students, for them to get up in front of the class or get up in front of a group and share their hard work. That can be tricky even for me as an adult, right? You feel a little nervous doing that. So these types of quick games and activities that you can really incorporate on a daily and weekly basis help your students feel more confident and comfortable in your classroom. So I hope you enjoyed all three of these ideas to help your K through two students practice their speaking and listening skills. If you have any other ideas that you like to use in your classroom, drop them down in the comments below so we can all read them. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new week's video. See you next time. Bye.